Day two of working from home during the coronavirus outbreak. It is currently about 3.30 p.m. I've just been working from home and uh, also been paying attention to the news to see what updates we've had. It is officially a, not a travel ban, because this country is not banning anything apparently, but it is a travel advisory so that you're not supposed to travel. So officially we really couldn't have gone on holiday anyway. Uh, even if our airline hadn't cancelled on us. But today I got a text message from them saying for the first time that it's cancelled, even though it's been cancelled since like Saturday or Sunday. But today on Tuesday I got a message to say it has been cancelled. And then as I was watching the Foreign Secretary advise against all but essential travel, I got a text message again from KLM 10 minutes later to say uh, I can check in now. <laughs> so. Uh, mixed information, but I'm not going to be checking in. I've already applied for a refund of my flight. What I am doing is I'm going out, <gasps> uh, keeping my social distance from people, but I am going to go out and uh, go to the shops. I was planning, obviously, to be away now for three weeks, so I got some dry foods and dry goods, but I did not buy any fruit or vegetables because I thought there's no point, it'll all go off, whereas now I'm here, I need them. Uh, we're not going to even bother trying to go to the big Sainsbury's where all the shops were bare the other day. Everyone's bulk buying from bigger shops, but it looks like smaller convenience stores still have things. So we have a small convenience store, a little Sainsbury's, about a 10 minute walk away from here. So we're going to try and see what we can get. I'm saying we, Aaron is off of quarantine, off of isolation now. It's been a week since he met the person with coronavirus. So... He's not developed any more symptoms. His head cold was like kind of a little bit, but went away and it wasn't anything like shortness of breath. There was no coughing. It was no nothing. So yeah, he's uh, going to come out and come with me. And I'm also posting some of these. So I bought a bunch of face masks because we were going to Korea. You buy face masks and wear them anyway. Like 95% of the population are wearing them now. Even if medically they're not supposed to help you if you don't have coronavirus, but they uh, are wearing them anyway. So we bought a bunch of them and now I don't know what to do with them. Um, so I'm sending one pack of them to my friend who is coming with me because she bought half. And I'm also sending some to my parents because uh, in case they need to go and visit my granny. She's in obviously the at-risk group being over 70. 93 now is she? 94, 93. So uh, I'm gonna send them some as well, just in case. How does it feel to be out? I feel alive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm interacting with a people, a people, you're a people. I'm a, a people. A human, I am leaving the building. It's Fresh great. air, love it. Nando's, how many people? Yeah, there are still people. I mean, not a lot, but it is also like a Tuesday in the afternoon. It's like three, yeah. Some stuff. Ooh, not behind you though, is it? Yeah, no, not there. Uh, is there anything I need? Broccoli. Broccoli, broccoli. No. Oh, no. Definitely stuff here. But also much emptier than usual with meat. Mm. No paracetamol, no ibuprofen, no toilet paper. So they're now saying on the news that the plans that they told us on Thursday, mm -hmm. if they'd continued with those plans in the UK, they would have anticipated 250,000 deaths. <laughs> what? 250,000. No. So that's why they changed tactics so quickly, because they were like, this is the right way. And then they went, oh, 250,000 is a lot. Because now they're anticipating 20,000. Because now they are telling us to stay out of public. Yeah, and that if you've got the virus, to have the whole household stay at home so that it doesn't yeah. move. Yeah, so, <laughs> quarter of a million people. Well, it took a second for them to realise. One of the things that really struck me yesterday was that I watched the Prime Minister briefing uh, the press in the UK, and then later on I watched the presidential briefing of the press in America, and they were so different. I've never watched one before, but the presidential briefing was just like in the movies, you know, where there's like a disaster movie and the president holds a conference and he 
tells the nation some news and then all of a sudden all the reporters go, Mr. President, Mr. President, or Madam President, Madam President, and shout and he picks people. And it was completely different from the Prime Minister's one where they go, they just sort of, they pick people. No one's shouting. They just sit and wait. And then the Prime Minister will say, okay, now this person, now this person. Like, so different. And then in terms of the information as well that was coming across, uh, they seem to have, I, I missed half of it, but they seem to have experts who gave their opinions on things. But then the questions went solely to the president. He took every question and feelings about Trump aside, there's no way that he'd be able to know. Like he's not the medical expert. He's not the science expert, you know. So all of these questions were coming his way and it was very avoiding. I don't know. I would be interested to hear from any of my American viewers currently um, or any Brits who managed to watch it, but particularly uh, my American viewers, what you felt about it if you watched it, because it really did feel like, for example, when they asked him like the stock markets, like at the moment, the stock market is terrible there. It's down everywhere. Um, and they were asked, you know, how, are, how is this going to be safeguarded? How are we going to protect the stock markets? And I believe he said, we just need to get through this. We just need to get through this. And then we will be back bigger and better than ever before. And I was like, that's not reassuring. <laughs> that's not a plan. I, I don't know. Like when we ask questions, when we've got the press in the UK who are asking questions, the Prime Minister will answer if he knows or he'll defer to either the science or the medical expert that he has with him. Um, and they're giving answers. Sometimes they'll say, we, we don't know or this isn't something that we can say just yet. But they will say, you know, an answer that is usually about like 80 to 90 percent answering the question that was asked. But I felt like the questions that were being asked were fantastic from the press. But the answers that were being given were very much avoiding like giving direct plans giving direct actions saying anything um there were a few answers that i thought he gave that were quite good and he did a few times say like that's not something that we know just now like they said the number of masks that we've got currently like what supplies do we have and he said that's not a number i know now but we can get it to you so appreciate that but like the rest of it i was just really surprised that the information that we were getting from the president was so yeah anyway i just thought it was different in terms of uh uk versus america another day done working at home kind of um when it comes to working from home i guess everyone's habits are kind of different but i i have always worked better in the evenings like just always and so with having regular working hours, obviously it's not really conducive to that. So I do my, my 10 till six at work. But now that I'm working from home, like I realized I can be a bit more flexible. So I've been taking a, a couple breaks through the day. You know, I went to Sainsbury's today. Um, and then this evening, I'm going to just keep working when I feel more motivated. I will always get my working hours in. It's only fair and it's the only way I can do my job really well. Um, and I'm very passionate about the company that I work for. And so taking the mic and not working is not really in my game plan. People are still texting me. Oh, that's another thing. What I'm really loving from this whole debacle is the group texts. <laughs> I'm in so many different groups and we're all communicating about it. I've got my international squad group of friends that we, uh, we're all talking about it. Uh, I've got my family group chat. I've got uh, another friendship group chat. Like my group chat action is top notch. It's really weird to think that it's Tuesday. I'm still working from home the rest of this week and then potentially my company could make a decision to keep us at home longer. We haven't had any more updates from uh, my CEO yet, so I think that they're going to tell us by the end of the week whether or not we will be working from home next week or whether we'll be back in the office. But from the sounds of things, London is, as they say, ahead of the curve. Um, we're going to get it here quicker and faster, the coronavirus peak. And the London mayor announced today that he's reducing the services to 
go into central London. So it just seems that that is probably going to be the decision that they make is to tell us to stay at home. But I can't say for certain yet. We just keep texting each other like, this is so crazy. This is so, so crazy. Never seen anything like it. And hopefully we'll never see anything like it again. But there we go. Anyway, signing out from vlog two. Look at that. Two videos in two days. That London life. New chapter. Uh, see you later. Bye-bye.